Right, it's half an hour until lunch. I've just finished the normal, so I'm going to have a go squeezing in the Meg. <laughs> that seems unlikely, doesn't it? But if I have split these videos, which I probably will, then welcome. I'm Robin, and this is Molten Modular DIY, and I'm going to build the Neutral Labs Meg. It's a wave shaper a unique wave shaper that does something very interesting but it's only a small module so i reckon an hour maybe hour and a half what do we think the lawnmowers are started up outside so that's always a good thing there seems to be only one packet of bits and there's and there's the ic's power cable pcb just the one let's get this done let's just get stuck straight into it see where we get to where's the front panel is there see simple easy just a bunch of resistors and that <laughs> let's have a look at the build guide Get ourselves straight in. So the components are grouped into two bags. One of them is plain white. The other one has the transistors and ICs in it. Yeah, we can see that. So there's a list of stuff, step-by-step -step instructions. Solder the diodes and all the 10K resistors first. So let's see what we get inside. You do not have to ring the re do not have to read the ring codes or use a multimeter. Just count the ones in each set to find out the value. Okay. They're all stuck in here. Okay. So we've got a set of one, two, three, five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. A set of six, four diodes, a set of three, a set of two. And there's a one. So, for resistors, diodes are easy enough. There's only four of those, I think. They're all bad 85s. Crazy stuff. So for 10K, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, I might as well just stick them all in whichever ones they are. So there should be 11 of those, 10K ones. So let's do that. Let's do the 11s. And see where we get to. It really is wanting me to do the diodes as well. So heck, let's do the diodes. Let's do the diodes. So, the diodes, they only let current flow in one direction. So what we want, I can bring this camera in a little bit, is we want to find the spaces. I need to put on my magnifiers. And when you have a look on the board, like D3 here, see that white line that has to match up with a black line on the diode so that's going to need to be that way around you see that those two down there are the same another one they're all in the same orientation this time so it's going to bend them down one side and squash them together bend them down the other d1 make sure the black line is matching up with that white line yes it is so that's that. D2 the same. D3. Now I said lots of really interesting and poetic things about soldering and the you know the nature of doing kits and stuff when I did the normal <laughs> earlier. So for a more verbose soldering experience, did you go and check that one out? But for this little Meg just quite like to just steam through it because it looks nice and small and I reckon I can fit it in today and that would be awesome because I could do with a little bit of unique wave shaping in my life so with the uh, what I'm talking about so yeah these 10k resistors it's R4 to R8 and then R15 to 20 there should be 11 of them and there are on this sheet here so I'm going to pull off like four because this is I find it easier to bend like four at a time line those up push them over, squash them together, push them over. That should be all you need. So R4 to R8. R4, don't have to go in any particular way around. 
but of course if you like to keep things neat and tidy then you should have them all the same way round so that the colours look nice and follow. Oh, well, I've made a complete hash of that already. <laughs> Trying to get that in. Okay. R4, R5. Eight is there. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. So all we're doing is following the build guide. Doing what it tells us, that's the diodes and all those 10k resistors just placed in and the legs bent on the underside. Now all I'm gonna do, solder them. That's simple. That simple. You just, you know, bend the legs a little bit so they don't fall out when you turn it over. You can do all sorts of things with bits of masking tape if that's if that's your bag. It's not mine. I just like it nice and simple, just like that. So I've got my soldier line. It's up at 380 degrees. You may not have one that has a temperature gauge. That's all right. It just might take you a little bit longer. Don't worry about it. I've got quite a posh soldier iron because I do this a lot now and it became more important to have a decent soldering iron because it will make things easier. A crappy old soldering iron will do, will work, but it will make you work hard for it. Whereas this, it heats stuff up, it melts, it's beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, but you don't need any posh gear, any old soldering iron from, you know, the one you found in Lidl, that'll do. It's, it'll do, any old solder will do, leaded, unleaded. I tend to prefer leaded because it melts quicker and beautifully, at least in my experience. But because I'm using leaded, I've also got a fan blowing, which will hopefully take the dangerous, poisonous, carcinogenic fumes away from me <laughs> so that I, I don't die of poisonings. That's the plan. Also, you know, wash your hands afterwards, things like that, which is a rule for life, really. And all you're looking for is just a volcano's worth of solder. So you put your soldering iron down to heat the pad and the leg and try to present the solder from the opposite side. And it should, all being well, flow across. I mean, you sometimes have to poke it at the iron a little bit just to get it started, to get it moving. That doesn't mean that you've failed. It just means you get a load of solder up your iron and you have to scrape that off in your wire wall or a little bit of sponge type action and keep going. Well, I've got the cockerel going. That's always nice to have a nice accompanying sound. All right, we are motoring with this now. Now, I know I said you should probably watch that other video for all the talky stuff, but hey, I'm talking now. I'm just going to go with it. Sometimes it's a bit tricky amongst a forest of... forest of resistor legs to get in exactly where you need to go. Oh dear lord, they're having a conversation now. <laughs> right, I think that's all those done. That was quick and easy, wouldn't it? Look at that. That's diodes and resistors. It's not all the resistors yet, still a few more to go. So that's a super good start. Clip off all the legs. Nice and short. Not absolutely to the quick, I suppose just in case something has to come out. I find these tend to go in my feet if I don't take care about where they twing or twang off to. They end up on the floor, they end up in my toes. So I tend to be a bit more careful about 
taking the legs off these days. Good, getting stuck into that all right. So did that, do not have to read yet. Got the resistors bit, so now sold all the remaining resistors except R21 and 22, which gets special treatment later on. That's exciting. So I've got these, this is six resistors. Six resistors is one kilo ohms, R2, R3, and then 11 to 14. So let's do R2, R3. And what I'll do is I'll just get on with this and I'll see you on the other side. So that's all the resistors and those diodes, except for these two here, 21 and 22. Apparently something else happens to those. So we've got an IC socket to put in. Oh no, this is a disaster. <laughs> what happened to that? Got squashed in the bag or something. Oh no. Well, see the thing with IC holders is that you can actually just solder the IC directly to the board. So if this breaks a leg or goes bad, then you do have another more direct option. But assuming that these don't actually come out. I might get away with it. I think I might get away with it. Right, so this goes in over here. See the little bit that sticks out this little nick this little half circle that needs to be associated with the same sort of bit on the ic holder which corresponds to the dot on the ic now you can always put the ic holder in backwards and it won't matter provided that the ic goes in the right way around but you know it's better to get it all right if you can that will save you a lot of trouble not going in go on go on yes got away with it okay that's got in there nicely so because mine's all bent legged it's actually going to be in there quite nicely and not fall over when i turn it upside down if yours goes in properly put something over over the top hold it firmly and turn it upside down in order to do the soldering bit but when it's down just make sure that you apply enough pressure so go for one leg Hold it down, add the solder, take the solder off, put your finger on it, just so it's going to make sure it remains flat. And then you can steam through the rest of those weenie legs that heat up nice and quick and nice and easy. I mean, that's the other reason for using an IC holder, is so that you don't accidentally overheat the IC with the soldering iron and that results in it burning out. That would be unfortunate. That was in. <laughs> Easy. Now add the small capacitors. So what else do I have here? I've got these two capacitors. I've got a big capacitor. These are 0.1 that says so on the side. There's two of those, C1 and C2, which are C1 and C2 here. Oh, again, these are these strange legged things. So these horrible, <laughs> weirdly, weirdly bent legs. I've not come across capacitors like these ones until, I mean, ever before, I don't think. I don't think so. So yeah, strange legs, but the long leg is positive. If you bend them a little bit so they're a bit straighter, they'll go in easier. So C1 and C2. C1, long leg is positive. So that goes into the positive side. The white side is negative. 
and that lines up with the stripe on the side of the capacitor. So they have to go in the right way around. Long leg positive into there. Good. Turn those over and solder those. Now these are a bit close together, so just be careful. You don't cause a bridge between the two. And it's also hard to get the soldering iron onto both the pad and the leg. Sometimes the solder just ends up going up the, up the iron, but that can be okay. Because once you make the right connection, it will kind of flow off it again. Which is very clever. Look at those closely. They're not bridged. That's good. Right, now the power header, which is this fella here. This goes in there. And there's also a three pin header that goes, where does this go? Next to this. Not there, down here, next to the capacitor. Might want to hold them in place with sticky tape, because otherwise it's tricky to do. Yeah, it is tricky to do. These are tricky. So I'm going to uh, attempt to do it like this. Turn that over, slide it on by the side of the table. Oh, see, I've it's faltered. Okay, got it back, got it back. I'm back in, back in this. So yeah, this is a little bit tricky to do, but what? Now you've got it upside down, you always tape it on. But again, I'm going to press down quite hard to try to get that to be flat. And I will solder and hold it as I remove. I'm going to try and do the same down here. I don't know that it's desperately important. So I'm going to try to keep that as flat as possible. Do the solder, hold the board, and then remove. And then if you put one leg on, you can then have a look, turn it over. Yeah, that's going to work. And you can solder the rest. Now onto the C3. Pay attention to polarity. Polarity, that is this big one here. Long leg positive. C3 is at the end here. C3, long leg positive goes in, no bother. So what are the three transistors? Now they are in our little magic silver bag here. Got a chip and I got three transistors. Q1, Q2 and Q3. Polarity matters, got to put them in the right way around. Make sure the J109 is going to Q1 and Q2. So there's two of them. J109s, which are these ones, these two here, they go into Q1 and Q2. So Q1, Q2, see them along here? Now you can see that they've got a flat side and it just the orientation needs to be the same. So that's Q1. Q2, and then the, this other one, which is on this piece of annoying tape, this will be Q3. Again, same way around where it's supposed to go. Ooh. Take the legs off. Now the picture has also put the chip in. So this is our chip. 
I've got this tool here to let me just squash the legs in so they're nice and straight because they tend to come a little bit flayed out which means they're hard to put into the socket and if yours are like that then your best way I find is just to rock them gently against the floor against the floor against the table to try to uh, flatten them a little bit push them in a little bit so there's the the nick is that end and there's the dot on the on the front of the IC so that goes in in that orientation pushes in jobs are good and uh, now the remaining two resistors put them in their places as shown on the picture which picture Why didn't I do that already? Oh, I see. These are... Okay. So these ones are going to go in vertically. Oh, I've done a lot of this on the Erica Synths thing. So you need to bend them like this. They sit up as resistors. That's why these are slightly different. And so they're higher. So you want to put them in a little bit later on. So 22 is there put the body where the circle is although it really doesn't matter and our 21 is there so they're sort of sat up type ones like that cool put those in so put a little green jumper on the three pin header, any position, C manual. Okay. Is this a three pin header, AC or DC? Find right, lots of things? I don't know. <laughs> like so. Now flip the PCB over. And we're going to stick on the two jacks. You know what? I'm just going to crack on through and get this done. Oh. No, no, that should be right. Like that. These that stands a little bit proud, which is interesting. And that's got its all its pins all muddled up. It's got the knobs on. Then we've got a few of these. See that leg there? That goes into the to the outside hole, and that just gives it a little bit of kind of ability to grip itself into its hole just about it says you might want to clip the things off the pots and rotation that that bit there so I think what they're talking about is that little nub there I'm gonna I am going to do that so that the front panel goes down a little bit flatter we got a front panel that over the top that feels nice and flat slightly tighten on all the nuts and then solder so that'll keep them all steady should do at any rate while we solder everything from the underside while it's all rocking about the place perfect Right, let's just do this bit. <laughs> right from up there. I don't know, that's not great, but never mind. It's times like these, people talk about using helping hands, crocodile clip sort of things, which is probably a really great idea. I just never seem to have the room for such things. That looks like it's all done. Now plug it in and test it. Really? At this point? Plug it in and test it? What should we do that? Should we go all the way, all the hog? See what happens. God. Oh, I see. So this is sort of strange bending, whereas this is like pulse width modulation. That's all it looks like. Should we give it a go? Well, I don't know. I think we should give it a go. Look, I mean, it's looking pretty good at the moment. 
looking pretty good. Let's just steam on in, shall we? So make sure you get the power connector right. So it powers around that way. Good. So first test is whether oh ouch whether it smokes or blows up. Looking all right so far. So we need a bit of sound. There's definitely something going on. If I take this into the CV input, that's moving that one and moving that one. So there you go, that seems to work. Let's get the um, knobs on it. So for the knobs, turn them all the way around to the left, put that sort of a bit like that and that should go around to there so maybe I want to just do it a little bit further around to give it that kind of evenness this one all the way around to there and then push them down if you're happy with it nice so there you have it the Meg unique wave shaping which I'm going to explore in a little demo after this which hopefully you'll see I might put it through a scope as well so we can see what it's doing exactly but yeah neutral labs Meg in a really nice simple easy build nothing difficult there at all well explained manuals great packaging is great it all it's, it's not really that possible to get wrong <laughs> I would say well maybe it's always possible to get things wrong but yeah, good, simple, nice, nice little build, well done. And that took all of all of 40 minutes, really? Hardly that. <laughs> Great stuff. Hope that was helpful. In the meantime, go make some tunes.
Thank you.